Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about uh, command line tools in Clojure, which is not the most usual way of using Clojure. Uh, but but I, I was curious to, to see what we, we, could, we could do, like what was the state of the art for Clojure programs in the command line, if it was acceptable, if we could run something useful. So it's a, you, okay, I will like, maybe give a spoiler, but you, you won't be able to, uh, to release the new, like new grep or new curl that will replace the, the old tools. Because it is like, you see, that it's a bigger uh, binary and it takes a bit longer to start up, but it, it could be very useful for your own uh, workflow. Like you could have your own command line tools to deploy your the, a new version of your 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 server uh, to stop start to <coughs> or to uh, consume data from some remote system right Re remote service okay, can you see there yeah so the uh, oh, and nothing that I will show today is something that I invented or I created. It's just uh, this is just a, a survey of things that exist in in, in the community. Right? So the most obvious thing is that in, in the closure core there is this this dynamic variable that is the command line args. So when you run a program, you, this this variable will be populated with a string of all parameters. So initially, I thought, okay, I can use that. I can parse. I can like, split with spaces and parse. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, but if you really want to do all the validation and all the all possible cases to have alias for different commands, that's a lot of work. And if and also if you want to have a, a help command like to show the usage. So I found this Closure Tools CLI, which is an official library to do this. It, it makes things much easier. So let's see here. So this is the command line args that I was talking about. Uh, well, there is this Closure Tools CLI, right? So if you use that, you, c you can just declare your I go create declare a program with gen class, so it generate the Java thing. You declare a data structure with the options. You can give it like a default value, the function that will be called, uh, and and then you you just have your main function calling parse options and and this structure, and it works fairly well. Like it creates automatically this this summary with the options so it, it, it can describe you can have like alias like it could be dash p or dash dash port okay so it works fairly fairly well i was happy with this but i kept searching there is this clj sub command which is a bit better i think and yeah, and it, it can it can basically do the same things. I think it's a bit better, but the other one has the advantage that it is official. But you see that it it generates pretty much the same map, so I didn't see much difference. Mm, now there is like the the one that was mo most like, impressive is this cell A matic. Uh, it does much more. And it was much harder to find. I don't know why when I was searching for it, like, it took me much longer. Like I didn't know this project existed, so I was just searching for command line libraries in Clojure, and this project almost never showed up. I only found it in a link in a blog post. So they say it's, it's built on top of, of the official one, uh, but it's one uh, higher level of abstraction. So it can consume other things like it can consume uh, JSON or YAML. You, you can pass like if, if the command is a, a location like a URI, like a, could be a URL or a file path or something. It automatically consumes the JSON file and parses and returns the data structure to your program. 
and it, it can slow up files and it can parse EDN. Uh, it can it has some like type, so you can specify that a, a certain parameter is a number, or like an integer, or a float, and it, it validates. It shows error messages if the user uses the wrong way. So it's much more convenient. So this is the one I I recommend. Like if I had to write it to create a command line program now, I would use this this library. It has yeah, it can use a spec. It's a more uh, modern thing. You can you can read about it and run through everything. You know? So to to parse the, the arguments, I would choose this last one. Now, something that will almost certainly be useful is that there is this namespace closure Java shell that pretty much only has this function sh. It's basically the only thing there. And then you can use it to invoke external commands. So you want to do something that your program cannot do, or it's not implemented in Java, or if you want to use some other command line tool that that's, that exists, or that is faster, or for whatever reason, you can just do this, and it will invoke a sub-process. It will pass a shell, and pass the arguments, and, and re returns. Pretty simple, but very useful. Uh, so once you have your program done and written, how do you run it? How do you how do you package? How how do you do it? There is this line bin plus program here. Yeah, this is the sh command. Yeah, with, uh, it's backtracking a bit. Sh you pass the parameters here as many strings. Right. So after this. We have this line bin plus. So it's just a line game plugin that you can specify the, the path of the binary, the, the name, the uh, JVM options, and it will make a, an executable so you run. Like it, there's no magic here, it's nothing special, but it, it is it makes a tool for you. It's convenient. Uh, Another thing that sounds very promising, and that was the original thing that that was the inspiration for this talk, that, is that I wanted to play with Graal VM. So I, so I, and one of the reasons that it is useful to make command line programs. So you, I don't know if, who has heard of Graal VM. Yeah. Okay. okay, good. So it, it is like a compiler and virtual machine to run many languages in the same machine. So it can compile JavaScript or Java and Python and a bunch of languages and run in the same runtime. So even th there are some projects uh, for interop between uh, Java and JavaScript using this. You can run two different languages in the same platform. It's pretty cool. And it can generate a binary for you. So that is the uh, the advantage for us here. And there is also the Joker, which is an implementation of Clojure in, written in Go. So it, it would be also better for uh, command line programs, right? Because it, it loads faster. Another like different approach is that you could use Clojure script. So you could use like Plank or Lumo or Shadow, like all of these could could work to create their own script. So, but but again, it's not something that they would deploy probably because then the person must need uh, must must have a uh, node. So we'll probably not release this, but it's just that something that some tool that could improve your workflow. And you could have some other Lisps that are not closure. So I didn't. Uh, didn't go deep in, in these other ones, but they are related. Maybe some people here have more experience with them or are interested. In, in particular, Pixie is a almost closure. Like it's created by a guy from the closure community and it's heavily inspired by closure. The only problem is that it is abandoned now. Like the last commit was in like two years ago. Um, 
and yeah, and there is this application. Let me show you. Okay, so Grow, Blank, Lumo. You can see all of those if you want. If you if you are interested in in one of these, I have all the tabs open here. So if you want to see more details, I can show. Hi. So this quash, like the closure bash, closure shell, is an example of a command line uh, application that looks super cool. And it's, so it's one example of something that you could do, uh, you could create using these things. So if you see the, the animated GIF here, it's, it's basically a shell, but everything you ha every time you have something with parentheses, it will treat as a closure function call. So you can mix uh, shell commands like ls and pipe, a word count, but you, if you prefer to count the words using the count function in closure, you can just use parentheses and it knows that it's supposed to be a closure call. So you can use reverse and group by, partition by, all the list processing functions. I have not used this yet, but I think it's super cool. It might be useful. I'm considering testing this. Uh, okay, if you want to see some, so not specifically related to Closh, but if you want to see how to create a program, can you see or is it, is it too small? Probably small. Yeah, too small. Yeah. Where is it? I want to know. No. Um. What is the command? Does anybody remember? I never do this. Yeah. Control plus. Yeah, not really working. I uh, know, maybe I. Yes, thanks. Okay, can you see? Yeah. Okay, so for Lumo, for example, you can you just create a uh, CLJS file and you put this at, at the top, so it will execute this command with Lumo, passing your like if I, in this case I'm using tool CLI, so you just specify the path of the jar. And, and then you put your, your script here. There is no NS, like namespace clause, in the beginning. You, you can just put everything, throw it here, because it will uh, evaluate this file anyway. So, and, then, and here you can do like any closure script function, like normal. You can define it, and any operation is valid. So in this case, we are, we are parsing the arguments. Like here, let's show you. Here, Lumo, like I marked it as a executable with chmod, right? So if I pass some arguments here, you see, you see the command line, uh, the, the library tool CLI in action. So it it parsed these arguments and it's showing this the options. But I, I didn't specify anything there in the code, so it's just telling me this. I think I can run with the help. Yeah, okay. Didn't show anything interesting, but. Help to. Hmm? Help is true. What is, what is it? Help is true. Help is true. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Good. Yeah, help is true, <laughs> right? So there is, uh, yeah, so it detected that you're using the help command. So if you. Like if you declared another command here, you would get something in the map of the options that are set. You saw that it took a while to run, so it takes a couple of seconds on my machine. Ah, uh, yeah, I see like 1.9 here. So for some applications, this might be too long, but if it's something that you're, you just want to like stop your remote server and start again, like two seconds, should be totally fine. 
and same thing, but now this is the Lumo version. There is the, the one that is just closure and it's using the CLJ command line tool. And it's doing, in this case, it is doing like the same thing. And the, the source code is the same pretty much. I only changed the, the top here, right? So instead of being SH, it, it changed to being a, a closure. And then you can write it, you can just use it. But it's basically the same same code to work, as long as you use libraries that exist in Clojure and Clojure Script. So there is nothing special. You don't have to set up a, a whole project. Uh, it's just one file. It, it's like it's really a script. I think it's very lightweight and convenient to do it this way for quick tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now there is this one. This is an example for the uh, the binary that I generated here. Let me show you how it works. Yeah, you can generate a native image here. Just passing this, like you have to pass this flag so that it doesn't throw an exception when it's compiling, uh, because usually it doesn't uh, it doesn't allow dynamic loading of libraries. But Clojure is like dynamically loaded into the JVM. So if you're doing any anything with Clojure, you have to sp pass this flag, and no server and jar, and then you create this jar. It takes some time to run, and. But once it is generated, you can just run the command. In this case, like if you see the source code here, it's just, it's a toy calculator. So it, it can add numbers, subtract numbers, it's just the normal functions here, right? Well, in this case, it is like calling to string at parsing. Uh, but you see that it's very declarative. You can just put the, the the map here with the uh, with the options, the commands, uh, the, the types like type is an integer. And if you try to run here, you can pass first argument three, second is four, it returns seven, so it, it works. Like you have a command line application. You saw that it's still kind of slow, so it's still one point six, so it's much. Uh, takes much longer to run than basic commands, right? Like if you, if you do like time, whatever, like this, like time this, it's zero point, almost zero, right? Zero point zero zero two. So it should be much faster than that. So again, like it's only for certain cases that you can use closure for this. But if you see the their official page here, uh, no, actually not the official page. The closure example that I used. Uh, they say uh, here, like in the normal execution, it takes 1.5 seconds. And the compiled image, it takes almost nothing. And I, I don't know what I was doing wrong. I, uh, when I ran, it was only the first I thought I was doing the same as the second one. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I have to investigate. But they claim that it could be, uh, it could run almost instantly. So th there is there is hope. <laughs> so if this is true, then then you can use it for basically any anything. Uh, the only downside compared to the, the the common tools like LS or Grab or something is that those tools are super small. And this one, if you if you make a binary with the, with the whole VM, it is many megabytes. Uh, let's see, what, what is it? Uh, here, they say it's like 25 megabytes and you, you can zip to seven megabytes. But still, you probably wouldn't distribute that. But again, if you're running on your machine, like what is 25 megabytes? It like, should, shouldn't be a problem. And then I think that's it. 
Yeah, I could have like more examples, but it would be more of the same. Like, should, should, I could have a, an example with Shadow CLJS or something, but it shouldn't be very different from what I saw here. So I think that's enough. Uh, any questions? So I have a question about uh, the hot, yeah, the the test the scale. Mm -hmm. like about the code or how uh, or to run the here? Code, the, code. the code here. So uh, can you go up? Why you need to pass it is a to string here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. why? why I have to yeah. go to string? Mm, honestly. I want you change you want to change the base. Oh. Let, let's try. Let's try. Like, let's see what happens. I think this was in the example, so I didn't Ah oh, actually I I have to compile again. Yes. Let's see what happens. Okay, it, it will be good to see all the all the things it does, like and that it takes a while. Ah, uh, right, right, I forgot the other command. The, I think it will take forever to run that. What was the other command? Uh, I mean, like just line over jar and compile. This should be enough. Obviously, you would not develop this like this way because the workflow would be super slow. So maybe you would just create a normal project and only compile when you're about to deploy. waiting for this. Let's see here. So I think that since it is compiling, uh, it wants to print a, a string. So it, want, it, doesn't, like, it doesn't like the fact that it, 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 that it cannot tell the, the type of this argument, right? Maybe that's it, but I haven't played much with, with that. that. That's my intuition. Like if you specify the, the, the conversion, it is easier to infer the result, the, the type of the result. Yeah, there you go. How long did it take? One minute and a half. Okay. Huh, it worked as well. Yeah, no, honestly, no idea why. Like, this was from the example. I don't know why in the example they did this. Ah, I know actually. It's because you have a base, so it's just to be more. Uh, to have one more feature. So the, in the calculator, you can pass a new parameter, an extra parameter with the base. That's, that's the only reason. So it has nothing to do with the compilation or anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just that if you see the, the parameters here, yeah, there is one that is the, the base that has a default value of, of 10. OK, makes sense. And you still would closer in your software to application, right? If I use closure in for, for making some command line application, I've never made any command line application in, in closure. No, I yeah, that's why I, I say that this is not something that I am using or that I have created anything. It's just a I, I thought it could be interesting and I thought it would be good if I if I did this research and could expose. So you, you don't have to do the research by yourself, right? And let's see if there was something else. No, yeah, that was it. Yeah, and now this is just a list of the references, like every library, every tool that I have 
mentioned. I, I put the reference, the link, if you want to read more about it. Okay. Questions, comments? No? Okay, so that's it. Thanks.